Okay, hello everyone. And um, some couple of days ago, I shared this uh, little demo that I created using Canvas and get bound context. And I don't remember now the API name, but I'm gonna show you right now how I did this. Uh, this is part of an experimentation that I'm doing for my for the project that I'm working on, a startup that I'm building. Uh, that actually tries to connect the same uh, element into different like pieces of content. So you see that here I have nine and the nine and it's the same. Of course, everything is Loro Ipsum, Lorem Ipsum, sorry. But, uh, but yeah, that makes the trick because I have, I'm going to show you actually with the code. Mm -hmm. So here I have, this is a basic uh, create React app application, as you can see here. And I, buy, I throw everything in the app component because this is an experimentation. So let me try to walk you walk you through it and, and show you how I did it. Okay, so here you can see that I'm creating a dummy blocks in the application with an ID and then the content that is actually the uh, Lauren Itsum. And I'm creating all these uh, elements. I think there are, there are 18 or 20. I don't remember. Uh, so I'm creating a, an array with that and then just iterating over them to return a new object with an ID. So then inside the app, I have a bunch, I have a couple of things, but first let me show you the, the, the actual uh, JSX. So here the trick is that I have a canvas on top of the whole application. So a canvas that is full width and height of the screen and uh, it's on top of everything. So, and then I have here both the the first uh, row of content, the first column of content and the second column of content. And you see that each element has its that data ID and also a key with their ID uh, selected. And also I'm setting a ref to the ID selected uh, that I'm storing here in, uh, in the state. And I'm running that with a custom like random number here. So I'm setting that selection. And then, uh, and then that's how I'm setting the ref to each uh, p tag that it's uh, matching the selection. Okay, so now let's go to the. Uh, there's nothing fancy here. I'm actually also using um, Tailwind uh, to make this faster. So I'm just having a like a flex component with two columns and each column just has a scroll and that's it nothing fancy as i said and here the canvas i have the ref uh, already here set up and let's talk about the magic here so i have this update function in the in a use effect okay first let's go for the first use effect that is actually setting the random selected item and then I'm setting the canvas width and height to the to the to the window width and height. This is important to in order to use the get bounding client rect uh, API and get the values as as the as I need it to render the thing. So uh, to walk you through a little bit, so I have these elements actually. If I uh, if I come here and do opacity zero. If you reload, you see that there's no overlay uh, here because th that's actually the canvas. Here's the HTML and the canvas is the one rendering those like squares and, and those lines on top. So I'm just gonna put that back in and then let's see, let's go. So the second use effect is uh, have this function called update and that's that function is calling this draw transclusion this is how i call this like connection between two pieces of text that are the same 
that's how I call them. Uh, and then uh, this function draw transclusion is actually as getting the context for the canvas element, um, getting the values uh, where that those texts are because if you remember here for the first column I'm setting a ref to text one if the selected ID is the same as the ID that is uh, that is rendering here so that's gonna get the ref uh, if not there's gonna be a null ref so for each column there's gonna be only one element with a ref so here one here one okay so I'm getting those to get the actual position and 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 size of that element and with that I'm actually setting first here I'm uh, I'm clearing everything from the from the context of the of the canvas element and then I'm setting the fill for whatever I'm gonna draw and I'm rendering here first a fill rect. So this fill rect is is just rendering the actual. Actually, if I let's just comment, so then it will be easier to see. So now, if you see, now we have only squares. So those fill rect are setting are just rendering this square right here. And where is that data coming from? from this get bounding client rect because it's just getting the actual sizes and position depending on like uh, refer referring to the window. That's why I said it's important to set the canvas width and height to the window because that's how I can match uh, with the position of the actual element. And then what I'm doing here is also creating a path and this path is, and let me just show here the path. If I go back again, this is just rendering. Uh, let me just reload again, reload again. And now we have an easier way to see it, I hope. Yeah. So uh, let me just go through it. So I'm setting, I'm telling the context of the canvas context to begin a path. So first I need to move to a, p a point to start drawing, okay? So here, this is Tx plus T, T1x plus T1 width uh, is, uh, is here, is this point right here because I'm just saying uh, T1x that is here plus the width. So that will set me here, this point. And then the second point is the T1Y. And the T1Y is actually where uh, uh, it's in the Y axis, uh, where it starts and it's actually here. Uh, canvas uh, uh, like uh, axis start from the top left. So just bear in mind that. So I'm starting here. So T1X plus width and T1Y here. And then the second and then I'm writing, rendering a line to T2x and T2y because I want to go to the actual top left corners of the second element. So T2x, T2y. And here it is. Then the next element is going down. So I need to go T2x and then T2y plus the height. So that will draw me this line right here. And then, of course, I'm drawing another line, as you can see here, from this point to the top bottom, to the bottom that is right here, okay? And then at the end, I'm just saying, hey, context fill that path. And I should call here CTX uh, end path, I think. I should call that too, but I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not calling it and it's working, so uh, yeah. Uh, and because I'm setting the field style, both like all of them, the the, rect, the rectangles, and the and the path are getting that uh, field style. Okay. So then this is the function, and let's see how I'm calling that function. Okay. So here 
I'm just setting this as a variables because of the sake of, of references, it's easier uh, to, to uh, is a recommendation to just like set it, set a variable for those uh, references. And then if there's available, if there's, if those references are available, those like uh, there's actually a DOM element that I can attach an event listener. I'm just attaching if this event listener to um, to the scroll event. So anytime I scroll, you see that it starts now. There's nothing rendered, but whenever I start scrolling, it starts rendering the canvas. So, and that's my usually like animations with canvas. You use the the API called request animation frame, but because I'm not, uh, I'm I'm rendering depending on the scroll i'm change i need to change the actual uh, 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 path and and position of the elements depending on the scroll that's why i'm just calling that on scroll okay so i'm just calling both uh, i'm putting the to the uh, document one um, um, column and document two and then here i'm just returning to clean up those uh, those uh, event listeners, okay? And anytime dog one and dog two changes, I'm also rerunning this. And, and that pretty much it. Like it, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Like for me, the challenges are that um, all this information about the which element lives in which uh, document or which column uh, comes from the API. So I need to also set like a way to to get those connections and then apply this to to the actual documents but um that pretty much it so i'm just like uh, and actually i can just remove this function update uh, because update seems to be a little bit better function and then change this update to um, draw transclusion and everything should work as expected and you see that anytime you render you scroll the uh, the element seems to be following but it's actually re-rendering everything again and let me show you why it's important to clear because if i don't clear and i come here and start whoop and start scrolling you see that now everything is red why because i'm not re rendering everything okay so that's important and that pretty much it um uh, pretty much it <laughs> my english at this time is a little bit weird so um so yeah uh let me know in the comments if you like it if you want to me to talk a little bit more about canvas and how i'm doing these things i'm actually learning so uh, make sure if you want to learn, go to MDN Canvas API, and that's actually the best way to start learning. And and I got a lot of ideas, a lot of cool things from here. So uh, def definitely check that out. And and yeah, uh, please like uh, the video, share it if you want to. Like uh, share your comments also in the comment section, or maybe just. Uh, tweet at me uh, uh, in in the, like on Twitter. You know my my handler, or maybe I'm gonna put it there. And and that's it. Thank you very much.